Rusa Mari, it, uh, we welcome you at Kugazans. Uh, after we are at lunch, it, uh, we would like to introduce you to the fabulous wing shooting we got in South Africa. Well, I'm looking forward to it. This lunch looks great. I'm looking out over these sunflowers and I see pigeons flying. Let's eat, buddy. He went down. Well, as you can see, we have quite a few pigeons in this field. South Africa is the largest agricultural producing country on the continent of Africa. And as you can see, we're in a large, a very large sunflower field. And that's what all of these pigeons and doves are coming in here to feed on. We have looked in the craw of some of the pigeons we've shot, and they are just full of these little black sunflower seeds. You know, that's right, Bruce. You know, all of the countries that we go to around the world, if we've got a lot of birds, you've got a lot of agriculture. You know, when we were driving in here today, we had a, a pretty good ride to get to the field from the lodge. But to be honest with you, all about the last 15 or so miles was nothing but grain fields, just one after another. Lots of sunflower, lots of corn, and of course here, lots of sunflowers ready for harvest. Right. Started off with a double. <laughs> right, I got some more coming from the right down here, Bruce. Gee, nothing for me. Nothing for me either, the way I shot. <laughs> <laughs> Those were, they were doing this just about the time you get a sight picture. They're just zigging and zagging. Here you go, Bruce. Got to give these things a little more lead, I guess. They're moving along pretty good, Marty. Yep, I, I was right behind him. Just barely. Kind of got to get a feel for the speed. Yeah. Man, they move. <laughs> wow, these birds can embarrass you very quickly, Marty. Well, I'd appreciate it if they'd at least fly up in the sky. <laughs> these things were all down on the ground. A little straighter would be helpful. Look at that. Just about the time you go to pull the trigger, they totally change direction. <laughs> A single. I think you got him, Marty. I think I did too, Bruce. <laughs> we'll be right back with some more humiliation from South Africa <laughs> right after these messages. There you go, Marty. There you go. Two. Well done. Ah. Now, this is very much like being in a big dove field in the United States when you don't have enough hunters. You just have to take your chances. In front, Bruce. All right, good shot, Bruce. Man, that bird was out there. Hey, that was a long way. Well, you know, at least he was flying straight, or half straight, <laughs> so I had to take the shot. More? That'll be yours. <laughs> I mean, I, what do you do? <laughs> that is funny. Things sound, they sound like jet planes turn when they turn. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you're able to see this at home, but these birds are doing things that you just, I just couldn't believe a bird would do, especially after that first shot. Birds up front. Man. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> you know, uh, it's not often that I brag on one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, usually we brag when we get a double. Yeah, yeah, I'm bragging if I'm I bragging get one. I'm bragging when I get one out of five. <laughs> out front. 
Good shot, Marty. Thanks, Good shot. It was a long lead, too, believe me. <laughs> I bet it was. Oh, boy, those are... Look at this. Oh. Did you get two? Yeah. Well, that's what you get for flock shooting. No, no, I actually killed the ones that I shot at. <laughs> How I missed any other ones, I'll never know. Out front? There comes some more right here. Ah. Well, about all you get's one shot. I squeezed off a second one, yeah. but it was a futile effort. But it's uh, kind of just a, a poke. They really get into some gyrations after that first shot goes Man. off. The problem with that is they're going so fast that you really don't have time to recover for a second shot. Right. I mean, they're, they're out of here. On your left. Hmm. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You would think in a flock like that, you'd hit something. Man, they're there moving. Three out front. Out front. Good shot, Bruce. There we go. That was my far-reaching barrel again. Well, I've got my far-reaching choke screwed in here, <laughs> I can tell you that. <clears throat> I changed about 10 minutes ago. I don't think it's choke that's, it's just, man, they're just zigzag. I mean, they don't stay on a straight line for 10 yards. Well, this is, a, this is, to be honest with you, a much more sporty bird than the spot wings we shot in Argentina. Oh, much more. They stayed on a line. These birds, now, I don't know if it's the nature of the bird or the field that oh, we're in. we got a bunch in front of us here, too. Yep. Coming our way. <laughs> Got one with the second barrel. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, Marty, if, if somebody was keeping score on the shells per bird, this could be ugly. It's getting ugly. <laughs> Not what we're accustomed to. <laughs> no. Oh, two in one shot, Bruce. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, well done. I didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah, I did well. kill the one I was shooting at, but his buddy went down oh, too. Up yep. front, more behind, to your right. Nothing for me. There you go. I think Marty's getting that uh, hard right crosser there, getting zeroed in on them. Well, those weren't die doing either. Yeah. They flew pretty straight. That helps. Well, when they dip, it makes you pick your head up. More. Nothing. Oh, geez. Where'd they come from? Ah, got him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they came in right on the deck. Ooh, I never even saw those. I'll tell you what. This is, um, this is wild. When we talked to some of the local hunters about how they hunt these birds, and one of the things that they said was that you could actually take some of the dead pigeons that you've got and make decoys out of them. Now we've done that in the States by putting decoys primarily down on the ground. Here you don't want to do that because the birds actually are landing on the sunflower pod themselves. Now as you can see these birds out here, they've been placed up on the pods and the birds as they're coming down the field can actually see them sitting up on those sunflowers. I just want to know how you slow them down to straighten them out. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. But I'll tell you, that's, the, uh, that's some of the wildest gyrations and flying I've ever seen. That's what you did to me a while ago. I know. Just about the time I was on the bird. But I got him. Yes, you did. Good shot. <laughs> My far-reaching barrel got him. Oh, did I touch nothing? The flock shot theory didn't work then. I tell you, this is what makes pigeon shooting to me, is they never fly in a straight line. I mean, as soon as you take a move on them, they are just doing all kinds of gyrations. Oh, I wasn't. Did Good you job, let yours buddy. get away, Marty? Yeah, he got away. 
Well, Bruce, I just changed about 10 minutes ago. I changed to a tighter choke. I'm not sure that it was the right move. Yeah. But um, with this wind blowing like it is and really only being able to pick out one bird as fast as they're turning, most of my shots are, you know, 35 yards. So right. I, um, I actually put in something a little tighter than a modified. Well, I'm shooting an improved modified and a light full. And here comes in front. Look at here. That was a wasted effort. Yeah. Just about the time I... <laughs> uh, got one. I got one. Man, I mean, you're, you know, you're only getting one shot. This is like a single barrel gun shot. Well, what happens is they dive and go back down below the, yeah. below the sunflowers and you can't see them. It's test, it's, uh, it's, it's 40 shooting, I'll tell you that. Marty and I are shooting B and P seven and a halves. I'm shooting a 20 gauge, Marty's shooting the 12. I'll tell you though, I wouldn't mind having some sixes or even some fives for these pigeons. It's snowing over there, Marty. <laughs> yeah, I think I got a couple out of that flight. Hey, Marty. Yeah. Here's that bird I shot that almost landed on me. I'd like to show you what is driving us crazy out here. Nice bird. About the size of our barn pigeon, maybe even a little smaller. Yeah, a little smaller. Got a red right around the eye. Now, this is called a spotted pigeon or a rock pigeon is the common name that they call it around here. Very beautiful bird. You can see the white spots on the wing and again, the red around the eye and you can see some very red coloring in the neck here. It's really a pretty bird, but Bruce, you know what really is the telltale sign here? What's that? Look at the wingspan. Yes. The wingspan of this bird in relation to its body is really very large. off from what very a large. lot of game birds are. Yes. This, these wide wings are what give this bird that advantage in flying. Right. And I can tell you, <laughs> Bruce, I've shot birds all my life. And maybe today is just out of the ordinary for here. You know, we've never shot these birds no. before. So we don't know if this, this may is... be one of the toughest birds that I have ever tried to shoot. You know, I don't think that I have ever shot a bird that uh, is as uh, aerobatic. Not even. Bef I mean, before you shoot, they will see us or they will see something or they may be looking. We don't know what they're doing, looking for a place to land, but they they really have some aerobatics. I don't know what they're doing either, but these big wings yes. are a real advantage. Boy, I, I didn't come within 10 feet of him. Uh, we both shot at the same time. I shot right behind him, too. Same results, too. Yes. <laughs> Straight down, let's see where they go. They're on my side. <laughs> you sent him backwards. I'm gonna Kruger him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got three or four out of that though, Bruce. Yes, we did. I got one right over here and then you got two right there. That was good. And then you set that one backwards. <laughs> you know, it's important if you're a wing shooter to be a little bit flexible. And Bruce and I have just gotten flexible. When we first got out in this field, most of the birds were coming down these rows, coming straight down the road. But now they've actually moved out just a little bit. So we've got changed 90 degrees so that all of our shots are crossing as opposed to being driven. I think we're going to probably have a little more luck making those shots too because we're a lot more comfortable with a bird that's keeping his line as opposed to one running right up on top of the gun and taking off left or right as we pull the trigger. That a boy, Bruce, good shot. <laughs> like I say, you get one shot, just take one. Here's Marty. Get out of the way, sunflower. <laughs> well, it's so low that when I, I'm shooting, you know, I've got horizon, but I get a sunflower and you, you can't swing the gun. Oh. That one shot again. 
<laughs> you know, Bruce, they say that after these birds come in here and when we were having lunch, I heard one of those guys make a comment that they had estimated that up in these mountains there are five million of these pigeons. Wow. I have no idea how many of them might come into this right. field, but so far we've seen quite well, a few There's a good birds. population here, uh, and I can see how it survives. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, the good news is that everything that comes into the field has to go back out over our heads coming this way, only with a tailwind. <laughs> That'll be so <laughs> a challenge. I'll take it as long uh, as they're flying straight. Your eight foot lead might become uh, 12 to 15 feet. You know, and that's the thing I, I think you uh, talked about earlier is they're coming in looking for a place to land, so they're doing this. Yeah. Hopefully when they go out, they're heading somewhere and they'll fly straight. Well, it's really, you know, if you look, I mean, you don't see any sunflower seeds on the ground. These birds have to come in and land on this right. sunflower, right, right on it, and just hold on to it with their, with their toes, and they'll actually pluck the seeds right out of these sunflowers. That's how they eat them, and of course, that's the reason that these farmers are so happy that we're here shooting. Now, we're not depleting their population very much, but at least we're giving them a good scare. Your birds. Well, uh, how'd I miss that bird now? How? <laughs> that was an easy shot. <laughs> I don't believe there is an easy shot on these things. Well, that was one that I felt like I should have hit. I've hit some that I didn't think I would hit, <laughs> but I thought I would kill that bird and I didn't. Here's a perfect example of what Marty was talking about earlier. You can see where the pigeon has set right here and cleaned out all of the seeds. He's taken probably a quarter of the seeds out of this whole sunflower. A quarter of the seeds are gone. There we go. I got two. Two? I only got, got one. Out front. Good shot, Bruce. All right. That was a long one too, Marty. Yes, it was. I wish there was some way to have a camera on the end of my gun barrel. It's, it's making light figure eights <laughs> all over the place. I can't find the target. <laughs> yeah, because it's not there very long. No. <laughs> No you think you're on a, it? There's a line on these birds. Straight out front. Well done, Marty. Well done. Let's try one. There we go. You got him, Marty. Yes, he went I down. Did. He went down. And I'm empty. There you go. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the rock pigeon or spotted pigeon in the Republic of South Africa is probably the most challenging wing shooting that I have ever done. Marty and I have hunted quite a few different places and quite a few different species of birds. But I'll tell you, this bird with its curling, diving uh, speed and everything else that it has, it is a tough bird to hit. I'm not sure that you explained everything that these things can do. <laughs> well, I can't say some of the things. <laughs> they did everything but fly backwards like a hummingbird. <laughs> what a great bird to shoot. And we've got to thank our outfitter and professional hunter, Christ Vessels and Kukuzan Safari for making this hunt one that I know I'll never forget, and I'm sure Bruce feels the same way. <laughs>